Hey, what's up guys, it's Dr. Sammy. We're gonna be talking about the differences between fluoride toothpaste and hydroxyapatite toothpaste. First, let's talk about fluoride. Fluoride has been the standard in dental care for decades. It's essentially a mineral that helps strengthen tooth enamel, making it more resistant to tooth decay. When fluoride interacts with your teeth, it forms a compound called fluoroapatite. And this compound helps fortify your enamel, which essentially helps prevent cavity formation. Now, I know there's a lot of mixed opinions about fluoride. I have a lot of patients that may not want to use fluoride in their toothpaste, citing fluorosis that can develop on their teeth, which is like a white spot on your teeth citing health concerns and also citing the fact that they might just want a more naturally based toothpaste. And as a dentist, I respect everyone's autonomy to make a decision for themselves about what toothpaste to use. There's even some gum specialists on YouTube that advocate for the fact that you may not even need to use toothpaste to keep your teeth clean by simply using a brush and water to remove the plaque and debris that gets stuck on your teeth, that that might be enough for you. And what I would say to that is that it really depends on your unique scenario. Are you someone that doesn't suffer from getting a lot of cavities? Are you someone that has an excellent diet where they're drinking a lot of water? Someone that is flossing every day? Or are you someone that has suffered from getting a lot of cavities every year? Someone that has a lot of crowns, root canals that have had their teeth extracted before? Maybe a person that has their salivary glands affected from chemotherapy medications, radiation therapy to the head and neck. That's when you really need to start considering supplementing your oral hygiene routine with fluoride or hydroxyapatite or a lot of the other materials that are out on the market today. But from my own experience, I did use fluoride throughout my adolescence, and I do believe that it has helped me, on top of really good diet and really good brushing, stay cavity-free for um, my entire life. So now let's switch gears to something that's relatively new on the market called nanohydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite is a naturally occurring mineral that can be found in a large portion of our enamel and our bone. And it's been gaining a lot of popularity in recent years with more and more studies coming out as an alternative to fluoride-based toothpaste. There's been more research articles showing its efficacy in helping to remineralize your teeth. I'm noticing that it's becoming more and more adopted in the dental industry. So hydroxyapatite toothpaste works by depositing a thin layer of synthetic hydroxyapatite onto the surface of your teeth. Like fluoride, this can help remineralize enamel, stop the development of cavities, and even help with tooth sensitivity. So if you don't like the negatives associated with fluoride-based toothpaste, then maybe you should consider using hydroxyapatite toothpaste. Or if you don't like how there isn't enough research on hydroxyapatite toothpaste, then I would consider using the standard tried and true fluoride toothpaste. And if you don't wanna use either of them, you have that option too. And I wanna take the time to thank our sponsor for our video, Ollie. They make toothpaste with and without fluoride. The white bottle is gonna be one with fluoride. This teal bottle is gonna be one without fluoride. Both have small amounts of hydroxyapatite in them. Currently, I'm trying out the hydroxyapatite fluoride-free option. It's a great toothpaste. It actually has the nanohydroxyapatite that we talked about. It has xylitol. Uh, potassium gluconate, coconut oil, and uh, and it's a really good toothpaste. So I definitely recommend for you guys to check out uh, Ollie Toothpaste. I'll definitely put it in the link below. At the end of the day, your diet and your oral hygiene routine are gonna be one of the more important things that you need to consider in order to keep your teeth healthy. Brush your teeth twice a day in order to get the plaque and debris that gets stuck on your teeth. It's important to floss your teeth in order to stop cavities from happening from in between the contact points of where your teeth meet. There's supplemental tools like using a water flosser for people that have a lot of gum recession, for people that have a lot of food traps or spaces between their teeth. And all of these tools together with an excellent diet are gonna be the reasons why you can stop developing new cavities in the future. And super briefly, let's talk about the right way to brush your teeth. In general, there are three surfaces that, of your teeth that you need to clean. The first surface is gonna be the occlusal surface. This is your biting surface of your teeth. This is where a lot of plaque and debris and cavities can form in the grooves of your teeth. Another very important area is going to be along the gum line of the teeth. Okay, along the gum line. If you're not cleaning properly around the gum line of the teeth, then you can develop something called periodontitis or gum disease. And in the most severe state in a, a, of a person who is chronically inflamed that has gum disease that has lasted for a very long time, you can lose bone. The bone is the supporting structure that holds your teeth in place. And if you lose enough bone, your teeth will become mobile and eventually you might lose your teeth. So if you're a little bit younger, it's really important for you to understand that your habits and your actions that you take now are going to help prevent you from needing more aggressive work later. So we talked about the occlusal surface or biting surface of your teeth. We talked around the gum line of your teeth. And I guess I should also mention that 
There's the front side, and we also want to get in the back too, where the palette is. And when you use a Sonic activated toothbrush, think about it in a way where you're going one tooth at a time. These random haphazard strokes left and right and quickly getting through your oral hygiene routine are not gonna be beneficial for you. But rather, when you're brushing, if you take your time to think, okay, I got that tooth and then I'm getting the second to last tooth, the third to last tooth, and you're going along the gum line in a 60 degree orientation directed towards the gum line, and you're thinking about, am I hitting all the surfaces of the tooth and around the gums that I need to in order to prevent cavity formation and gum disease from forming? If you're really thinking about it and you're taking your time, I guarantee you that you're gonna see huge improvements in your gum health and your dental health. And also a lot of people tend to rinse aggressively after brushing their teeth. And I think that's good, that's fine, um, rinsing all that toothpaste off your teeth. But if you do suffer from um, having maybe more cavities than usual and, and you're struggling to maintain that, then just remember that the properties in your toothpaste are very beneficial to your teeth. And sometimes uh, for patients that are at higher risk, I don't tell them to rinse as aggressively as they need to. Sometimes having a, a little bit of foaminess, I'm not saying a lot, just a little bit of foaminess in your mouth, um, is going to, while you sleep, is going to help protect your teeth. Thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share it with all your friends and family. And uh, I'll see you for the next one. Thanks.